What's up guys, Big Papa Leads here and in today's video I'm going to show you the way that I set up my Facebook campaigns and I'm going to talk about the different campaign objectives that you need to use because a lot of people in the school community and on our Discord are making some mistakes that are costing them a lot of money. So we're going to jump onto the computer in a second here. I'm going to show you really quickly how I set up a campaign. And guys, as always, our free course on how to build a lead gen business is on the school. The link is in the description below. Uh, we've already got 150 people in there after just kicking it off a few weeks ago. So super stoked for the conversations that we're having there. Yeah, guys, I'm excited to jump into this video because this is really basic, but really important stuff. So let's jump on the computer and we'll get started. Okay, guys, so let's quickly go over how to set up a campaign. So there's a few things uh, to consider when you're setting up your campaign. But first thing I'll say is 99% of the time that we build a campaign, we're using the lead objective for our campaigns. Okay, so let's take a look at that really quickly. So we use leads 99% of the time. Uh, we use engagement about 1% of the time when we're starting a new page. Uh, you may see my videos um, on how to get likes on a page for really cheap. So what you do is you set up an engagement campaign, you set up page likes, and then you get likes on your page from a cheaper uh, traffic country, such as the Philippines or India, you can get a hundred, you know, you get a thousand likes on your page for a couple dollars. So that's the only time we use engagement. And then all the other times we're using leads. We never use traffic, do not use traffic. It is a waste of money because Facebook is optimizing for people who are likely to click, but not necessarily convert. So all of these conversion things down below here are what Facebook's actually optimizing for. And it's just getting them to click somewhere. We, we actually want them to convert. So you can see instant forms and conversions are what we wanna use here. So when we go through the process of building a lead generation business, and again, join the free school, you can learn about this process, it's very simple. We like to pick a single niche to go into. We like to build a brand in that niche. You may have seen my examples, Insurance Ian, Timeshare Tracy, a fun, light brand, not a corporate boring brand, but a trustworthy, fun, friendly brand. Uh, in a given niche. So pick a niche, build a brand. We'd like to get a client and then we got to deliver leads to that client. Uh, step five is kind of improving quality and scaling. And that's the biggest gap that we need to make. But right off the bat, we need to figure out how to get a client, how to get them their first order of leads. So I like to start out even sometimes before I go and get clients to run a little bit of testing, I might spend two or $300 just running some tests with some creative. So the easiest way to set up a campaign is to actually test with lead forms. And I'll show you that in a second. I like to use ad set budget. I know some people like campaign budget. I just feel like you have less control over the spend. So if you set up campaign budget and then you have five ad sets inside of that campaign budget, Facebook will decide where to spend that money. I prefer to have uh, more control over the ad set level because then I can split things out based on creatives and different things I wanna try. That's just me. Um, I will say, as long as you select leads as your, um, your optimization thing or uh, what's it called? Um, not optimization. Oh, what's it called? Why, why can't I remember? Campaign objective. There it is. I'm not editing this video. So <laughs> there you go, guys. Uh, as long as you select leads as your campaign objective, you're, you're already 90% of the way there. I know there's a ton of people that have different opinions on how to set up a campaign on Facebook. I am under the belief that for sure, there's lots of ways to set up campaigns. Everyone has their opinion, but if you have good creatives, it's not necessarily going to matter that much. I would rather focus on my creatives first and then maybe run some split tests around how to set up my campaign. Sure, maybe CBO is better for certain structures and certain objectives uh, that you might have. Maybe ad sets better. I've tried CBO. It didn't work as well for me in a split test. Um, so I like ad set budget. But again, the moral of the story is creatives are what's important. You need good creatives. If you have crappy creatives, it doesn't matter how your campaign set up which is why I like to focus on that more than my campaign setup, but ad set budget, uh, you don't have to touch, touch anything on this page. Just make sure you don't use their tailored campaign method, do it completely custom. Uh, declaring special ad categories, if you're in credit, mortgage, lending, um, what else is it? Jobs, yeah, credit card, mortgage loans, long-term financing, any of that kind of thing. You do have to go into a special ad category that will li limit your age targeting, um, but then you don't have to worry about getting shut down. So if you're in anything remotely close to a special ad category, uh, you should probably declare that. And if you're not in a special ad category, just don't mention anything to do with housing or jobs or financing because you can get dinged for that by Facebook and get shut down. And it's very annoying. 
um, especially with how bad Facebook support is nowadays. So I like to start out with instant forms because it allows me to test very quickly. So an instant form is just a lead form on Facebook. You can set up your first campaign there and run a few tests before you get that first client. And it's just gonna verify if your creatives are going to convert well. And let's say you run an instant form campaign and you get leads for $20. You can probably assume when you go to landing page, it's gonna cost a little bit more, maybe 50% more, you know, $25, $30 on the landing page. But if you were to just go and set up a campaign from day one that had this huge extensive quiz with 20 questions and your creatives and you got no leads, you wouldn't necessarily know where the bottleneck or issue is with your campaign. That is why I like to start with instant forms, even if I'm just testing a few bucks, just to get some leads, to see if the creatives uh, are working well, to see if people are going through the funnel. Um, so I like to start with instant forms and then graduate to website. I'll just select that for now. Um, you select your page here, obviously, and this would be your brand. Um, you can name these campaigns, whatever you want. I like to break out each ad set by the type of creative I'm doing. So this ad set might be broad targeting. And uh, let's say Canva images. I might do AI videos. I might do UGC videos. I like to break it out by the different type of creative. That's also why I like to break things out by ad set budget because if I, sometimes Facebook, if you're at CBO, will just feed all the money to Canva and it doesn't necessarily, necessarily result in Canva images, for example, getting the best cost per lead. I find Facebook isn't always perfectly efficient with the money that they wrote into campaigns. Um, I trust Facebook with some things, other things I do not trust Zuckerberg with. And this is one of them, my monies. So I like to use dynamic creative. This might be an unpopular opinion, but this allows you to test very quickly. Um, it's just what I prefer. You can totally set up your campaign without dynamic creative and you have to have inside of your ad set 10 different ads separately. I like to use dynamic creative because it allows me to plug in multiple ads just into one, one single ad. And then you can do a breakdown and look at what's working best. So you're still able to see what's working. It's just faster and it's just what I prefer. Again, you can do whatever you want. As long as your creatives are good, I don't think it's gonna hurt you to start with dynamic creative. I know some people wanna wait till They've kind of established some good ads. I totally get that too. Um, I'm just a giga chad and I want the best creatives out there. So that's what I focus my time on. Um, in terms of, what does this say? I like to read these silly things Facebook says. That's, who cares? I guess they want you to integrate with your CRM. Fair enough. Do it, sure. Uh, in terms of budget, you want... This is pretty subjective, lots of opinions on this too. My thought with the budget is I want to get out of learning phase and give Facebook as much data I, as I can as soon as possible. And I want to have my daily budget at least double what I think I'm gonna pay per lead. So if I think I'm gonna pay $25 per lead, I wanna try and get at least two leads per day. Ideally, this is more like I'm spending between 100 and 200 probably on an ad set. Um, but when you're just starting out, I get it, you're running tests, you don't have a ton of cash, try and spend at least double what you think a lead's gonna cost, okay? Worst case, you know, at least what one lead you think is gonna cost. Because leads are gonna be 50 bucks and you can only afford 50 bucks. I would rather spend $50 per day for two days than $25 a day for four days. Um, just because Facebook's really gonna struggle to kind of optimize things with a very low spend. That's the way I do it. I like to use daily budgets. I don't do day splitting because it's just annoying how Facebook has it set up. In the future, if they ever allow you to turn off ads at night, I would do that, but I hate lifetime budgets and the way that Facebook forces you to set them up on there. Uh, in terms of targeting, I like to start as broad as possible. So if I can go nationwide, I will do that. If I'm looking at a certain state, I will target the entire state uh, and let Facebook do its thing. Um, it doesn't always work perfectly like that. Sometimes you need to plug in some interest targeting. Um, but for the most part now, the algorithm's pretty smart as of July, 2024, and you can go broad with it. So you can go countrywide or, or statewide. I like to go statewide sometimes because you can call out people in the state. Hey, Texas, you know, families get life insurance. If you call them out and you use the lingo, that's going to help you target that state better because a lot of times the, there, there's so many, such big differences between states, like the difference between someone in Florida and New York and Alabama are, they're all very, they're almost different countries. So calling them out and using the lingo and showing the flag and all those things can be a good way to target states better. Um, I keep all placements on 
personally. Um, you can definitely split test and mess around with having different placements. There's one guy in, in Lee Base Bootcamp um, who selects very specific placements and gets a very high click through rate. So it's interesting messing around with the different placements on there. I just keep it wide open because I'm going for scale and I'm a Chad, as I said. Switched, I like to set up with more controls. Switch setups. Give me all the controls. Don't tell me what to do. Um, think about you know where your audience is. Do you want 18 year olds? Maybe not, especially if you're looking for people, you know, maybe with kids or parents or something like that. If I can, if I'm not targeting a senior audience, I like to turn off 65 plus uh, and go with about this age range. I don't want to use as a suggestion. Why would I do something as a, as a suggestion? That is the silliest thing ever. Silly Facebook. Um, so yeah, you can start with broad. That's what I like to do. Again, obviously this is going to depend on the niche that you're in. Um, Skip ads, I don't touch anything there. And then I go to my ads. And when I'm testing ads, what I like to do, so let's say I'm, I'm starting to try and look for clients, but I wanna run some tests. I would set up a campaign with two ad sets. And inside those ad sets, I would have, uh, let's say I did one with images and one with videos. I would have five different creatives, five different copies and five different headlines. So you could have five different copies, I should say, right here, okay? Don't just do one, write like, write five whole different pieces of copy, and then you're gonna select images, select five images, depending on your budget, you can select up to 10, and then do another ad set, select five videos, and that's gonna be your test, okay? And this is a little uh, example lead form I have here. Headlines, you can do five headlines as well, okay? Oops, five headlines. And then you don't need a description. And then you can set up your lead form. Uh, we have a template for the lead form in the lead base school in the bootcamp. Uh, and if you just, if you want to ask me how to do that, just hit me up on school and I, I'll send you that, um, that lead form template and some ad templates as well. I'm happy to get, send you guys some ad templates if you if you need some help. Um, and that's basically it. This is how I set up an initial testing campaign. And after I've verified the creatives, I would as quickly as possible start to send the winning creatives, the traffic from those to website conversions. So I'd set up my pixel, a landing page, a quiz funnel, and I would send my traffic there. And that's what I would start to deliver to that first client uh, as quick as possible and then get some feedback from them and continually improve and tweak things to get them the best leads that I can. The next step would be I would start to run on Google Demand Gen, take my winning creatives here, go to Google Demand Gen, go to Broad Search, uh, Broad Match Search Ads as well, and just continue to expand in the niche that I'm in. And wherever I can get a lead for less than I'm selling it for and make a good margin, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna wait to get feedback from the client on how each platform is working. And that's it, that's how you build a lead gen business, guys. This is the initial setup that you need. Um, I actually just built a cheat sheet as well that's gonna be available in the bootcamp um, that's gonna show you exactly how to get started with your ads. There's examples of the ads that are, um, that you can use for that initial setup for dozens of different niches. Um, so hit me up if you wanna get access to that and check out Bootcamp, it's only 99 bucks a month to join. You can cancel any time. You get access to me on some group calls, you can learn from other people, good conversations happening and all that good kind of stuff. And guys, I think it's gonna wrap up the video. Hope that's helpful. Uh, do not use traffic. It is a waste of money. Never use it. Just don't do it. Use lead forms and then move on to a quiz as quickly as you can. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much for watching the channel. Join the free school community below and we'll see you in the next video. Big Papa Leads is out.